Welcome to the Urban Survivor channel, and in this video, we're going to be checking out the Loop SK01 Skywalker LEP flashlight, which is one of the most incredible flashlights on the market, not only in terms of performance, but it's packed with tons of exciting features, and it brings us right to the cutting edge to the most advanced flashlight technology available to the average consumer. I'm excited to be sharing this light with you, and there hasn't really been any other reviews of this light yet, and I've tested about a dozen LEPs, and I'm very impressed with my experience with the Skywalker, but before we dive in and check out this light be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here and if you're thinking about getting this light there's a coupon code down in the description which will save you 15 percent all right so this is the sk01 and it has the most elaborate body design i've ever seen on any flashlight the variant here is the aluminum alloy version in camo but you can also get it in gray and there's also silver titanium and black titanium alloy versions of this light available as well the tube is a nice mashup of rounded and square milling patterns and on the side there's a tactical ring which gives you a few different options when it comes to gripping the light, but it also serves as a fidget spinner, which has some great runtime on it too. And there's even a silicon nitride ceramic glass ball integrated into the ring, which you can use to punch through glass. And this ring is mounted on a rail that's also adjustable. There's also a switch on the tail and we'll discuss the UI in a few minutes. And there's also a bolt style physical lockout you can activate by pulling on the tube until you hear it click. And this will help protect you from accidental activation. And to disable it, all you have to do is press this button to the side and it will snap in place. Beneath the head, there's another fidget spinner. And as far as I know, this doesn't serve any additional purpose other than just being a fun thing to play around with. And it reminds me a lot of what Lumitop did with the Thor 1 gyro. And next to that, there's a way for you to adjust the focus of the beam by rotating this ring. And you can adjust between a super tight 2.8 degree beam, which is gonna help you guys reach those further distances, and a wider 18 degree beam, which is going to illuminate larger, more close up areas. The bezel is also very robust, and we've got four more glass breaker balls. And this is a shine through style LED with a 20 watt LEP module and a glass lens. There's no charging port on the body, but you can access the battery by holding the spinner ring and unscrewing the tube. And it does come with a loop branded 18350 battery with an 1100 milliamp hour capacity. And there is a built in USB C port which you can use to charge it. There are a few different ways to grip the light, but for me, the most comfortable is the hammer fist grip with my middle finger through the tactical ring, with my thumb having access to the tail switch. And in this position, the grip is really secure. And I definitely feel like I could do some glass breaking with the bezel or even with the tip of the tactical ring. And the way it's designed really lends itself well to self defense, which is another added benefit to this light. The light also works well in a more traditional grip and you don't have to use a tactical ring if you don't want to. Even though it is really large for a single 18350 light, the trade-off is, is that it's much more practical as a self-defense tool, and it's very easy to grip in higher stress situations. The light is controlled by a tail switch, and to turn it on to high, all you have to do is give it a full press, and when you do, you'll see a beautiful array of multicolored emitters on the tail, which is a fun design element, and it reminds me a lot of what Lumentop did with the Thor 2. From this mode, you can hold the switch down, and it will step to a low mode, and two clicks from any mode will bring you to turbo, and three clicks will bring you to strobe. A full press will turn the light off, and from the opposition, if you hold the switch down, you'll enter the low eco mode. Most of the LEPs I've tested only have two modes, and I've never seen this many outputs on an LEP. Now we're going to take a look at some beam shots so you can get a better idea of how this light performs. We're going to start off on turbo, which has a max output of 910 lumens, and I'll adjust the focus so that you can get a better idea of this light's peak intensity, which is around 640,000 candela, which will give you a max beam throw distance of about 1600 meters. It will run on this mode for about 30 seconds before ramping down to high mode where it can continue to run for roughly another hour. With the tight focus this light is really piercing through the darkness but as we switch to the wider focus the output is dropping down but it's still very impressive and it was able to give me great visibility of the field and the buildings surrounding the field and this setting is definitely more useful in a short to mid-range environment like this one. Now the output is lower and this is pretty much how it would look on high mode, but it's still able to handle mid-range environments like this one with focus adjustments with ease. Now we've moved over a few feet so you can get a better idea of what it might be like to take this light on a walk. And the great thing about having the adjustable focus is if for some reason, if you need to transition to see something at further distance, you can do this really quickly. And the building I'm pointing towards is a little over 530 meters away. And it's really easy to see the light reflecting back off the building, even in the presence of ambient lighting coming from the building already. Overall, the profile of the beam is still quite compact and it's not gonna draw too much attention your way. 
and it's only going to illuminate whatever you point it towards, and there's no flood on the light like you typically get with a traditional LED flashlight. Another thing to keep in mind is the fact that this light is extremely disorienting when pointed towards your direction, so if you need to use it in self-defense, this is going to cause a lot of discomfort if it's pointed towards somebody, and the strobe feature would definitely amplify this. Here's a quick look at this light on its 10 lumen eco mode, which would give you an 8 hour runtime, which isn't that impressive compared to the incredible runtimes you've probably heard about from LED lights with moon modes, but even 8 hours is unheard of for an LEP, which are typically in the 1 to 4 hour range. With the beam angle adjusted to its widest setting, you could actually use this light to read, and you'd need to be paying attention to where you point the light, and the lack of spill is definitely noticeable, but it is good if you want to keep a low profile. We'll wrap up this video with a quick discussion about price, whether or not this light is a good deal, and who it might be good for. The Loop SK01 does start at $399 for the aluminum version and $569 for the titanium version. However, if you want to buy it through my website Goodnight Gear, you can save 15% using the coupon code LEP15, which drops the price down to $339 on the aluminum version and $484 on the titanium version, including free shipping. Even with the discount, these lights are still quite expensive and some of the most expensive LEPs on the market. As far as performance goes, there are only a handful of LEPs currently available that run on 18350s, including the Lumitop Thor 1 and the Thor 2, and the max beam distance is similar to what the Thor 2 produces. As far as performance compared to average LEPs on the market, it definitely holds up well at the higher end of the throw distance spectrum, and it throws just as well, if not better, than pretty much any 18650 based LEP that I've tested, though it's not as good as some of the 21700 LEPs like Welltools W4, the Lumintop Thor 3, and the Amutorch BT60, and those lights are definitely next level when it comes to intensity. However, they are quite a bit larger and definitely not EDC friendly. Having adjustable focus is a very interesting feature, and there have only been a handful of other LEPs that do this, but the few that did this are either discontinued or significantly larger, and this feature makes the light much more useful to the average person who might just want to use this light for short distances or even around the house, and the Skywalker definitely broadens the use case for LEPs and makes them much more useful for the average person. Multiple modes is going to be nice, and that combined with all of the unique design elements on the body, as well as the tactical aspects and the durability of this light, make it one of the most innovative and usable LEPs on the market. If your wallet can handle the steep price, you definitely won't be disappointed with this light, and it's absolutely the most versatile LEP on the market, and it can pretty much do it all, and be useful for anybody working in security or law enforcement, a good companion for the outdoors, and an excellent tool for anybody with a nice size property they might need to keep an eye on at night. Thanks so much for watching the video, and I'd love to hear what you think of this light down in the comments below, and if you want to pick one up and support the channel, please check out the link to Goodnight Gear down in the description below.